Good Monday evening, folks. Chief Meteorologist Tim Pandage is here with you. It is September 23rd, 2024. Is your tropical update completely focused on PTC 9, potential tropical cyclone 9 that will most likely be a big headline over the next several days as it intensifies into a tropical storm, getting the name Helene, and then most likely becoming a major hurricane before it heads towards landfall in Florida by later this week. So here's the latest intensification, perhaps rapid intensification could be expected over the next couple of days. However, it may be delayed for just a little while. There are certain things in play right now that's capping intensification. I'll show you that in just a second. Now it is becoming a significant threat to the United States, not only with a large wind field as, as it's forecast to have, but as it picks up forward movement towards the coast, it's going to bring that big wind field farther inland and affect more folks as we head in late this week and this upcoming weekend. And it has the potential, as I mentioned, to become a major hurricane. In fact, as of the latest advisory from the Hurricane Center, they do explicitly forecast a major hurricane to make landfall in Florida later this week. So here's how it looks. Its presentation on satellite imagery is kind of in disarray. It's ragged looking. It's not very organized at the moment. There is where the center is depicted to be. And notice that all the convection is flaring up on the eastern side of the storm. That's one of the reasons why I said intensification may be delayed because currently it is being influenced by another storm, a hurricane in the eastern Pacific. This is Hurricane John that is just off the coast of southwest Mexico, a category two at this time, could get a little bit stronger and be a major hurricane here as well. Now, typically when we get two storms in close proximity to one another, the one off to the west, its outflow does impart wind shear on storms off to the east. And that is exactly what we're seeing here. West to southwest wind shear that is definitely evident on visible satellite imagery. You can see convection trying to flare up on the western side and the wind shear is blowing the tops off of that developing convection here, kind of keeping everything confined to the eastern side of the storm for now. It's asymmetrical and that is not conducive to strengthening anytime soon, but eventually it will move out of this area of increased wind shear and it's going to intensify most likely. Now for now, it's a good thing we have that cap on it because look at where it's located in an area in the Caribbean that not only has very favorable sea surface temperatures. We're talking 85 to 87 degree water temperatures, very conducive for strengthening and rapid strengthening at that. But that warm water also extends down to a depth. So when you get an intensifying tropical cyclone, it mixes up the ocean water, something called upwelling. And if this was just shallow warm water, it would eventually mix up cooler waters, which would be self limiting for intensification. That would not happen here. In fact, as it heads out of the higher wind shear environment, it still does have that warm, deep water as it heads into the southern Gulf of Mexico and even up most of the Gulf of Mexico has plenty of warm water and fuel for the storm to develop. But thankfully, right now, the jet fuel that it's over uh, won't be uh, used for fuel with the wind shear currently acting on it. But as I mentioned, eventually it moves out of it. So in its intensification in terms of sustained winds will go up from here. Right now we're sitting at 35 mile per hour winds uh, by as early as tomorrow afternoon, maybe later, depending on if the wind shear takes longer to keep it degraded or there could be even some land interaction too that I'll show you in a second. But their forecast right now is for tomorrow morning, early afternoon to become a tropical storm, getting the name Helene. 39 mile per hour winds or greater is considered a tropical storm. Then it's up from here. We become a category one storm, then eventually forecast to become by Thursday evening ahead of landfall, a category three storm. I will tell you if it does not have land interaction, if the wind shear wanes earlier, this could be very uh, a conservative estimate. It could be much greater a storm than that. Here's the official forecast from the Hurricane Center. This is the five o'clock track with the eight o'clock advisory stats. OK, this is Monday evening, 35 mile per hour winds, gust to 45. Here's the track going out a couple days, becoming a tropical storm by tomorrow. We're up to 50 mile per hour winds Tuesday afternoon. The, the forecast here does have our forecast cone and the center of which threading the Yucatan Channel, that body of water between the Yucatan Peninsula and far western Cuba that opens up into the Gulf of Mexico. This does not call for any land interaction here, which means we intensify going north from there with a straight shot 
through the eastern Gulf of Mexico, north to the Big Bend of Florida. Here we are at Category 3, its strongest, just ahead of landfall. And this could likely be a scenario where we see it intensifying right up to landfall. 115 mile per hour winds Thursday evening making landfall as of this forecast right now. But keep in mind, this is a forecast cone, sometimes referred to as the cone of uncertainty. It only stays within this cone two thirds of the time. So we could see a far eastern trajectory of this or far western. And also, I'm going to show you the wind field here in a little bit. Impacts are felt well outside of this cone. So if you're watching this in St. Pete's, or down into Fort, La not Fort Lauderdale, over into southern portions of Florida, and you're outside of the cone right now and you're thinking you're good, no, because if a very large wind field does form, we're talking a huge swath of the western coast of Florida will be under storm surge alerts because all of that water will be blown towards the coast there. All right, it moves inland due north through Georgia and then gets tugged to the north and west. And that has to deal with the overall steering pattern. We're going to have an upper level piece of energy here that's going to kind of pull the storm farther to the north and west and away from the eastern seaboard, which is good news there. And it will likely rapidly weaken as well. So if it is a major hurricane at landfall in Florida, that would be the ninth major hurricane landfall in the state since 2000. Just look at them all here listed. Remember Michael, Category 5 back in 2018 on the panhandle there. So let's talk about forecast spaghetti plots here. So each line, remember, is a different computer model. Remember I said that there could be some land interaction here? Some models do lean towards that, more of a western track, bringing it over the Yucatan. Now, the Yucatan's rather flat. So we're not talking mountainous terrain here that would interrupt the, the um, circulation. What it would do is just briefly take it away from its fuel source, the warm ocean waters, and that would stunt intensification. So we'd have a little bit of a weaker storm entering the Gulf. That would be good. However, the majority, as you see here, do go through the Yucatan Channel, staying over warm f jet fuel water for the duration of its lifetime and then lifting to the north. There's still a considerable spread here east to west on the landfall location. So it's not set in stone to be the big bend of Florida. It could be east or west of there about 400 miles and then it heads inland and you see it kind of doing these loops. That's the interaction with the upper level low feature sitting over the middle parts of the United States. So now let's compare our two models, the European and the American GFS long range. Already showing some development here as we start things off on the model. We go out to say midweek. And we've got an intensifying storm, both the GFS and European keep it over open water, its core, just to the north of Cancun, Cozumel. And then it heads into the Gulf of Mexico and a straight shot. Notice how quickly we cover ground. We move, we pick up forward momentum here as it lifts to the north and gains latitude. This very large storm system depicted by both models means it's going to be accompanied by a huge wind field, okay? Wind is only one hazard. We have storm surge and then, of course, inland flooding from torrential rainfall here as well as the system lifts north and inland. And notice how quickly it dissipates by the weekend. Its circulation gets dissolved and absorbed by that upper level feature. So it's really going to be something to watch carefully. Now let's talk about that wind field. I want to show you to you here on our computer models. So you see the different color codes here of different wind speeds. We get to around hurricane force and then getting close to major hurricane force winds. Well, well below hurricane force, like category two there. But here we are by Wednesday, midday. We already have hurricane force winds as it's entering the southern Gulf of Mexico. It lifts north and look at the size of this wind field. Everything covered in blue is tropical storm force winds. And this, I put a measurement on this, and this is like 600 mile diameter wind field here, as depicted by the models. It could be smaller than that or it could even be a little bit bigger. It depends on how strong it is at this point in time. And look at the swath of the hurricane force winds. We're talking 100 miles or more, probably way more than that, as it lifts north. And here we are just ahead of landfall Thursday afternoon. And this massive wind field all the way from Mobile Bay uh, down to Fort Myers, potentially experiencing tropical storm force winds. And of course, anywhere to the east of that storm center is watching those winds coming on shore and building the storm surge threat. So even though this is west of Tampa, we're talking on the eastern side of the storm, all of that wind and water is blowing into Tampa Bay as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. So with that forecast, 
Start making storm preps anywhere in red. So we're talking Western Cuba, uh, Yucatan Peninsula, Cozumel, Cancun, the resort areas there, and even into Florida as well. You got a couple day lead time, but the models here do show a spread of pretty much all the West Coast and up into the Panhandle, dealing with the potential of an impactful possibly major hurricane as we get towards the later part of the week and as it builds inland monitor the forecast there and even if there could be a westernmost outlier keep it in mind here in new orleans area and anywhere off to the west so that's not the only thing we're watching of course this is going to be the main focus over the coming days ptc9 strengthening in helene but there's also another wave that just emerged off the coast of Africa a couple days ago that's got a 70% chance of developing, and that would be the I name. I say the I name because I names are the most retired storm names. 11 times, I believe, they've been retired. So we got Helene that's going to develop in the Gulf, and then we've got Isaac coming up, our I name storm. Models, though, do keep that way out in the Atlantic, so nothing to to really worry about in the short term. We'll watch it carefully, uh, but that would be the next name on the list. So that's the latest on PTC-9. We'll likely, by the time we talk tomorrow, will uh, potentially be Helene, a tropical storm. And then from there, as you saw, possible major hurricane. If you've got any questions, you can find me on social media all the time, Facebook, Instagram, X, and also on TikTok. We'll see you again tomorrow.